And joining us now, an all-star polling team and politics team, NBC senior political editor Mark Murray, former Obama White House press secretary Robert Gibbs, and Jeff Horwitt, partner in the Heart Research Associates and partner in half of the NBC, the new NBC New Poll. So first to you, Mark Murray, the enthusiasm gap, the Democrats have narrowed it in our new poll. Talk to me about that takeaway and your other big takeaways in the world. Yeah, and Jeff. yeah, Andrea, in October, our poll showed Republicans with a nine-point advantage and in high interest, and now Democrats have closed that to an even, where 73 percent of Democrats have high interest versus 73 percent of Republicans. And why this is important is we're talking about a midterm election. This is not a presidential election where you end up usually seeing huge turnout. And we're expecting high turnout uh, for this midterm, but not as many people usually vote. And so the side that is actually usually more motivated wins. You know, Robert knows this pretty well in 2010 and 20. 14, when your side isn't enthusiastic and you don't show up, you end up getting that kind of midterm thumping. And Democrats actually drawing this to kind of even just kind of shows the degree of polarization in our country and how maybe, and there are a lot of numbers in this poll that look like a normal midterm environment, but this explains how maybe this could be a little bit different. So is that a glimmer of hope for Democrats against historic trends, Jeff Horat? And looking at the poll, you know, the, the competing issues, economy, the future of democracy, which is big, but interpreted differently by Democrats and Republicans, and abortion, among other issues, the economy, crime, immigration, the biggest issues for Republicans. What do you see? What is it pointing to for Democrats to try to try to pull it out? Yeah, well, it is. And Andrew, I think it is that Democrats are, are finishing strong here. And we've been concerned about this gap in interest all along. Uh, and the fact that it's even now, again, going back to March, it was Republicans had a 17 point advantage. And so the fact that we're even now sort of on a level playing field, the, la the last two midterm, first year midterms, again, uh, the party in power lost 40 seats and 63 seats. Uh, it really shows that there are signs here that this is not a typical midterm and a chance for Democrats to do better than uh, than expected given prior history. And on these issues, it really does matter that this is not, um, you know, cost of living is very important, particularly in places like Nevada. But there are other issues on the ballot. The single most important issue is threats to democracy, which in normal times is not an issue. We don't debate about how votes are counted. Sadly, we do now. And so this is what voters are sorting out. And I think one of the, it is sort of the alternative here, which is concerning to voters, is that uh, you know, voters are more concerned uh, about the future of the country if Republicans take control than if Democrats remain in control. And given some of the challenging numbers here, I think the fact that the voters are leaning on the side of preferring uh, Democrats to, re to regain control of, of, of Congress is an important indication that this is not a typical midterm. And Robert Gibbs, if this were a typical midterm, with the president's polling at 44. Historically, when presidents have had their polling at 44, 45, mid 40s, the op opposition party has taken over. The you know White House party has gotten a, sh a shellacking. But there you had three American presidents out on the stump this weekend, and by far the best closer was Barack Obama. Yeah, Mark conveniently reminds me of uh, 2010 and 2014. I was hoping it, it he was, was going to say 28, well, 2008 or 2012. The president called it, the President Obama called it a shellacking. Absolutely. So I, re was absolutely I remember it well. You remember that. Yeah, I re no, I, and I, look, I think this poll, you know, as we talked about it, first of all, the energy on the Democratic side, if it is equal to that of Republicans, is a significant change just from a month ago. Huge. Now it'll depend on where independents break. Mark and I were talking about that right as we came on here. But I think you have seen, you know, the power of the closing argument that, that President Obama made, uh, that President Biden made and is making as well. And, and you know, I, I think there's a, a shot here at um, keeping the losses in a normal midterm to a minimum, right? I, I think the challenge always for the party in power, right, in, in 2010, 2014, 2018, is you're fighting political gravity. And, and I think in order to defy that political gravity, you have to have the energy that the poll shows is beginning to be there for Democrats. But President Biden's approval in our new poll with independence is at 28%. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, going to be the decider, right? Because, and the challenge in these races, too, a lot of these toss-up races, both on the House and the Senate side, they tend to break in one direction because independents are going to tend to break in one direction. So I think that's the challenge for Democrats tomorrow is you've got to get the base so excited that you can hopefully deal with what you know is going to be some of that independent breakage on the other side. 
And Jeff, what are you seeing among black voters? That could be key in Philadelphia, which is the turnout there is going to be critical to Fetterman eking out a victory over Oz. Certainly in Georgia, um, there's a, a real uh, issue with two black candidates, but one of whom significantly has more black support. Uh, in, in, one could argue that Senator Warnock is the, you know, the pastor of the traditional Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Church, probably has more black support proportionally right. than does Herschel Walker. Yeah, no, that's right. I think that that's why President Obama is so important, why you're seeing him in so many of these swing states, because he really is these days a political unicorn. He is the sort of the Shohei Otani of politics, where he's able to both be a persuasion uh, communicator and also talk about kind of the get out the vote in that, that part of the Democratic base and, and reach those voters. He is net positive uh, as a politician, which is unlike any other political figure these days. Uh, and with black voters, he yeah, is, is rating under 80 positive, nine negative independents. He's 50, 34 in our latest NBC poll. And so, again, he has the ability, similar to what Bill Clinton was able to do in 2012, to be a familiar and trusted voice that Americans can return to and understand and, and make the, the case on issues like the economy, Social Security and Medicare, that there is a real choice here. And so you're seeing him in places, with, uh, again, like Pennsylvania and Georgia, uh, swing states that really mattered, uh, and reaching black interest really increased because because of uh, him making the case. Mark Murray, Robert Gibbs, Jeff Horwitz, uh, unlike I should point out, Donald Trump, who is spending his valuable campaign rally time teasing his own 2024 possibilities. An extraordinary year. Thank you to all.